Hello there, and today I will be doing my very first game review. This review for one of my favorite games, Spyro the Dragon. As a child, Spyro the Dragon played a big role in my childhood growing up. It was one of my favorite PlayStation games, and also one of my first. Released in 1998 for the original PlayStation, the game developer Insomniac Games mentioned they always wanted to create a game about a dragon. Thus, Spyro was born. For an original PlayStation game, the graphics were pretty good. They were bright, colorful, and pleasing to look at. Although it does have a few glitches to it, but the only problem was that you couldn't see details on characters' skin like the scales on Spyro's back. They were very similar there were a very similar shade, so it's not easy to see. The music in the game, however, was amazing. Developed by a member of the rock band The Police, Stuart Copeland does a good job of creating great music for the game. All the music is fitting to the setting of each level and bosses. You may recognize a few of, mu of this music, like the theme for Wizard's Peak, which was also used on the show The Amanda Show as their theme song. Well, there really isn't much to say about the game's gameplay. It's just a simple 3D platform. Being a game released in the late 90s, it was intended to compete with Nintendo's Super Mario 64, like a lot of 3D platformers like of that time, for example, Crash Bandicoot. In the game, you play as Spyro himself. Spyro is a cute little purple dragon who has a really awesome attitude. He's a real badass, and he's just an awesome character for a game. You also have a dragonfly following around, who's known as Sparks. He also represents your health meter. If he's light blue, that means you've taken a hit. If he's green, that means you've taken two hits. If he's gone, that means you can only take one more hit, and you've AKA you've taken three. When he, but when he's bright yellow, you're in full HP. The story of the game is that the other dragons have been trapped in crystal by the known by the one known as Nasty Nork. Spyro must go around using two different fighting moves, flame and charge. In some cases, you will be required to use one or the other on a certain enemy. For example, big enemies are too big to be charged, so they have to be flamed. And small and smaller or bigger enemies who wear metal armor can't be flamed, so they have to be charged. Makes sense? But some enemies are big and both wear armor, so how do you kill them? You'll figure it out. Your main objective, though, is to save all the dragons out of the crystal, while at the same time collect all the treasure that has been stolen, as well as steal back the dragon eggs from the nasty blue thieves. God, I hate those guys. Some things I didn't like about the story, though, was that it's a little confusing in the beginning. You're just randomly shown these bunch of dragons talking about stuff, and for a younger kid, like the game was intended for, it is a bit confusing, but eventually as you get older and play the game, and replay the game, you will understand it a lot better. And did I forget to mention, the game has tons of replay value. Even though it may just be because this game is one of my favorites, but it's fun to replay the game even though you've already beaten it millions of times. I also, one thing I didn't also like is the flying levels. I know a lot of people really enjoyed them. Personally, I just found them kind of annoying and useless. Although, I did find it very, well you know what, I think I'll save that because I don't want to spoil the game. My final grading for this game is an 8.9 out of 10. While the game is fun and still is one of my personal favorites, it still is a bit lacking in certain categories. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't get this game. This game is one of the most amazing games the PlayStation has to offer. And definitely if you're a fan of 3D platformers, definitely get it. 